side, let's slow it. I'm, uh, so what I kind of like the, um, I kind of like the beginning to be a little more pla plaintive. No, sure. is that the word that I'm looking yeah, for? Yeah, that's pretty plaintive.
via Facebook Live and Zoom. For those of us who are here in person, please take this moment to ensure that your cell phones are silenced. We begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation. So I invite you to get still and close your eyes. As we play the God's the love that I am chant, you may choose to chant along with it or simply follow along silently, repeating this mantra to yourself. If your mind wanders, simply bring it back to the mantra, God's the love that I am.
And so, as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you with us virtually or in person. Let's begin with our opening chant, God is in this place. Led by the wonderful Margaret Owen. Let's join together in prayer. So blessed to know the truth, the truth that God is all there is, that God is beauty, and that we all get to come together today, tonight, to be in this holy place where God is present. Never doubting, never worrying, always knowing that God is within us at the center, the center of our absolute finest and best and highest best version of ourself always we are divinely guided i know that i am of god that i am divinely guided that every word i speak that my energy my love my light it shines forth because god is within me i know that truth and i know that truth for everyone here in this room that we do our best every day to show up our light our love and we get to come together and share that with each other and i'm so grateful to know this truth, to know that we are all here in this one place, sharing this oneness, sharing this love, sharing God, sharing our truth. So I say, thank you, God. And I release my word into this perfect, perfect law, knowing it is done. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Please rise for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. You can stand up when I'm done. <laughs> In and out and over, side to side, around and through. The inner workings of my heart is a quiet thing we do. Just to listen in the silence to your ever-knowing voice, which reminds 
reminds me in each moment that I always have the choice and I will be big for God. I will be strength and power and glory, a radiant beam of love, a rainbow Magnificent life is manifesting, always safe and secure in the hands I'm resting. I will be big. Many is the time when I may lash out in my fear. Forgetting all the ancient truths I know I hold so dear. If I just allow the journey to the gentle navigator inside, set my compass on euphoria and release into the then I can be big for God. I will be strength and power and glory, a radiant beam of love, a rainbow upon the dark clouds forming, embracing the wondrous and the best things my magnificent life is manifesting, always safe and secure in the hands I'm resting, I will be big. And what was once the bud is blossoming into the greatest truth of all. I am part of the infinite oneness and it will serve no one for me to be small so i will be big for god i will be strength and power and glory a radiant beam of love a rainbow upon the dark clouds forming embracing the In the hands I'm resting, I will be big, eternally grateful. I will be big. Set my compass to euphoria. Uh -huh. that's, that's, that's a great line. Oh my gosh, I'm assuming you wrote that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just, just glorious and fabulous and wonderful, being big for God. I wish I could tell Siri to set navigation for euphoria. I'd keep trying to tell her, set it for not traffic, and she takes me right into it, but what are you going to do? All right, you know, I read something, by the way, hi, welcome, welcome in the room, welcome Zoomies, Facebookies, Facebookies? Sounds like a gambling thing, doesn't it? Awesome, all right. Uh, I read something today that I thought was really interesting. Outside of a dog, a book is man's best friend. Inside of a dog, it's too dark to read. Oh, come on, that's Groucho Marx. Maybe the delivery was just the timing. Yeah, I, I, or the rim shot, perhaps. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, 
Okay, science of mind. Let's talk about this. First of all, Adam, you are such a genius. The title of the talk is Paint It Red, and it comes from my own life mantra, which is if you can't hide it, paint it red. And I got that from a minister years ago who just, I loved who she was, and she embraced herself so totally. And because of that, and she wasn't like spelt figure anything. In fact, she was abundantly blessed. We'll just say that. And But because of her own love of herself and her comfort with herself, it was so easy to be around her. It was so lovely and so loving to be around her. And, and just being in her presence made you feel good about yourself. And I remember her saying that, and I thought, that is, that's who I want to be. I want to be that person that that says, if I can't hide it, I'm going to paint it red. And so I have tried to approach things that way so much in my life. And I think that science of mind works really well for this. So I love science of mind. I think this teaching is so, it's so great. I've been in it since I was a kid. And what I can tell you is that it's a user-friendly religion. Right? It's user-friendly because we offer practical principles for living a better life. You know, that's, it's, it's not just observable spirituality, it's practicable and practical. And it's also a DIY, do-it-yourself spiritual path. You know, no one here is going to twist your arm or try to manipulate you into anything. You have agency and you have choice. And you have the capacity, and by the way, I'm going to say the responsibility to choose. That's why I loved when you were saying those words about choice in your song. You have the capacity and the responsibility to choose your thinking, your beliefs, your commitments. So responsibility is maybe the biggest DIY part, and it's really, really good because it means that we are accountable and we don't get to blame anybody else. Oh, I know, I'm sorry. I'm, most of you, most of us, us, would like to still have that, that, that option because it just makes it so much easier if you can just look around and say, damn, it's his fault, it's her fault. Um, and it feels like it gets you off the hook, but you know what, mm -mm. no, no. Um, this paradigm, science of mind paradigm, isn't one that, that says you, you have to go through an intermediary. I particularly like that. You don't have to place your, in fact, we encourage you to please don't place your faith outside of yourself or hold your breath hoping that, that somehow you're going to be rescued by God up in the sky. We don't believe that if you find yourself in a situation experience that's challenging, painful, dangerous, or whatever, that some magical apparition is going to come down and scoop you up and sweep you off to safety doesn't happen. I think it's an adult approach to spirituality. I really like that this requires maturity. It requires an adult approach. And I think that a lot of people have a God that's really just like a, a Santa Claus for grown-ups, right? In fact, Dr. Mark, one of the things I remember him saying years ago, and it just cracked me up, is that he has observed that many people kind of have a relationship with God where God is a combination of Santa Claus, bellhop, and hitman. Yeah. Right? Yeah? Okay. So the blessing of having an adult spiritual path is that we, we, we don't believe that God surreptitiously hides things and makes you, you know, have to work, work through the, the... I mean, there is mystery in life. Thank God for the mystery. But, but there aren't, like snake pits or traps waiting for us as we try to figure things out. Um, God doesn't hide our good. We don't have to wish upon a star. We don't have to behave in a superstitious way or, or have the right stones or the right whatever in order to create lives that are more joyful, that are fuller, that demonstrate beauty and success and love. Um, I, I read something else. You know, one of the people I like a lot is Richard Rohr. And I really want to suggest if you haven't read any of his stuff, it's R-O-H-R. -R. You might enjoy him. And he says that Jesus didn't come to change the mind of God about humanity. Jesus came to change the mind of humanity about God. And I think that's what we do here so that we can up 
upgrade our God, right? Because Old Testament God, completely different from New Testament, and what I think is completely different now, where we are, because we don't do the story God. We do God as presence. God as an experience, a lived experience. You know, there are a lot of times in the Bible where God expresses and teaches in really obvious and non-hidden ways, which is fascinating because why have we come up with this sort of uh, race belief that, that God is hiding or we've got to work really, really hard to figure something out or manipulate the forces or, or you know, swing a dead cat at midnight in order to figure out what it is that we want in our lives? Well, that would be a good place for a rim shot. Yes, you're right. And so, but why do we have that? And I think that apparently in the Old Testament, everyone was really dense. They were really dense and they needed big signs and obvious wink, wink messages in order to get the lesson. And so the Bible, we look at the Bible as, as a metaphysical toolkit if you will, that offers us ways to look at our own lives and find the tools that we can use, that we can glean so that we can raise up, rise up, that we can have better lives. So we don't take the stuff that's in the Bible as literal in any sense. We look for deeper meanings and sensible loving guidance. So one of my favorite lessons in the Old Testament is that we should not cling to the past or try to compare it to our present. There are no gifts to be had in that. There's no power in that. So the way that the lesson is conveyed, for me, is like a Marx Brothers comedy or a Fellini film. I, I, I can picture sort of like Peter Sellers doing a, a Pink Panther movie on this one, because it's just so funny to me. Lot and his wife. It's, it's like a Simpsons cartoon. So Lot and his wife must have been really dense. And, and God kept saying, don't look back, don't look back, don't look back. But Lot's wife looked back, and she was turned into a pillar of salt. I mean, can't you hear Homer Simpson going, don't? Yes. <laughs> because Marge is now, she's basically been freeze-dried. Um, salt was and is a preservative, and it sucks the life force, the life juices out of that whichever it's, it's applied to. It's a preservative. And so, and it keeps it stuck. Stay, staying still, right, for a really, really long time. So Lot kept looking forward and did not end up like a statue, you know, like his wife. But the lesson being that the only moment that we have life and power is this one, right here, right here, this present moment. She became stuck in the past because she looked back. Isn't that interesting? There's no power in that. There's no light in that. There's no, I mean, there are lessons to be learned, certainly. So we observe that. We, we take the lessons and we see what is it I need to know so that I can live in this moment right here with full presence, full power, full consciousness, and wisdom. And that's what we need to do. Now, did it really happen? I don't know. Who cares? I think it's really good advice. I don't care if it happened or not. I really don't. In fact, all of it, I have heard the theory, and more than one theologian talks about this, that Adam in Genesis goes to sleep. And he doesn't wake up until the New Testament, so that everything that happens in the Old Testament is a dream. It's a dream of consciousness. It's a dream of experience and lessons and guidance and do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. I, I think that that, to me, that's just because it's such a, the Bible is such a psychology, psychologically rich wisdom text. It's also a good doorstop if you're going to read it the old way. Anyway, um, you know, we all have that person in our life who's unable to commit to life's current possibilities, right? Anybody think of someone you know who's just really stuck in the past? We see it in advertising. We see it in polit. oh boy, do we see it in political rhetoric. Phrases like the good old days. They're about sentiment. They're not about truth or reality. They're not about what really was what it was like in the good, quote unquote, good old days. So the, for me, the message there is that if I want clarity and understanding, I have to ask for it. Because God was very obvious. God was being very obvious. Life was being very obvious. The universe was being obvious. The universe was painting it red, really red, right? 
<sighs> I must demand clarity because that's what adults do. That's what adults do. Behaving in wishy-washy ways in any relationship does not get you what you want, nor does it allow for growth in the relationship. You know, your dreams, your desires, your needs, your passions, all of that, if we're going to be wishy-washy about them or passive-aggressive, passive aggressive, we're not going to have these empowered, magnificent lives that we keep yearning for and that we keep hearing we are worthy of having. We don't, that is not the way to do it. So we don't have wishy-washy God. We really, really don't. And in fact, God will appear to us in the way that we choose to appear to us. Now think about that. God will be experienced by us in the way that we experience ourselves. So if we are experiencing ourselves as powerful, magnificent, connected beings, then that is the God that we are a part of. But if we are experiencing ourselves as not that, then guess what? That infinite presence and power is not so infinite and not so much a presence or power that you want to hang out with. So that Richard Rohr has this wonderful meditation too that I like and I use it a lot. My image of God creates me. My image of God creates me. My image of God. So it's not just who and what we think we are that corresponds to the relationship we have with God, but it's if we think that God is responsive and creative and loving and, and eager to express and expand through us, guess what? That creates who and what we are because we are creating a mental equivalent. That's what we call it. We are embodying, and that's really, really big in, in our teaching. We want to embody that which we long to be, that which we long to have, that which we long to experience. We connect with that feeling, because the feeling is the experience itself as it's unfolding. It is the incipients of the experience itself, the dream itself that we want. You know, so imagine for a moment that there's something that you really, really want. And imagine yourself in that experience. You're there now. You're there now. You can see the colors. You can see the people. You can see whatever's involved. That's what brings the demonstration. That, that's what brings our healing, our revelation. You know, Dr. Mark talked about this on Sunday where he had been counseling with a woman who had been in a really, really abusive marriage, was living under the pier in Huntington Beach with three children, and she absolutely could not, could not come up with a mental image. And he knew it and didn't even try to, you know, shift or shape or manipulate her in any way, but said, what do you want? What do you want? And she finally was able to say, I want my own home, but I can't ever see that happening. And he asked her, if you could imagine it, what color would the kitchen be? And she immediately said yellow. So there was, there was just that one little opening, that one little opening. As Rumi says, the crack is where that, the light comes in, right? You just need that one little opening. And so that's how spirit does its work. Here's the gist of what I'm wanting to say tonight is we must be definite with the infinite. We must be definite. And for me, that means if you can't hide it, you paint it red. In other words, shine a light on it. Bring it to the light. Bring it to the light. Your divine light. Your divine light. God made it obvious to Lot. And he made it obvious to Moses, by the way. He had to give him a freaking burning bush. Are you kidding me? I mean, it, how, more, how much more obvious do you need that to be? It's a burning bush. And there are times even, there are times when I have done my prayers and my treatments and I have put on sort of a, um, an anthropomorph, anthropomorphical, wow, is that even a word? Anthropomorphic relationship thing with God and said, okay, God, make it obvious, make it obvious. I'm going to need a burning bush here. Pretend I'm really dense. I need it obvious. Give me a whole body yes, whole body experience, and it works. It works. Ah. So God made it obvious to Lot and to Moses and, and the rest of the gang 
in, in Adam's dream so that you and I could learn to make it obvious to that God presence within us. We have to tell the truth. Now, once upon a time, I grew up in a family that didn't do that. We really, really didn't. Um, we didn't tell the truth of who we were, what we wanted, how we were feeling, how this person might have hurt me, how that person betrayed me. We didn't do all of that because we were afraid of making each other uncomfortable. In fact, the, the paradigm I grew up with was everything was couched in a little white lie. A little white lie. Well, I don't want to hurt their feelings, so I'll just say this instead. I don't want to hurt their feelings. So I grew up thinking that's how life worked. I thought everybody was like that. And I didn't know how to tell the truth. I had to learn how to do that. I had to learn how to paint things red. I think I probably started off at like maybe a pale pink you know, and got a little bit darker and more bold and more audacious about it. But the model was if you tell the absolute truth about your feelings or disappointments or dreams, you're going to make someone else uncomfortable. So I believed that my feelings were going to cause pain and, and upheaval for someone else. So painting stuff red was a huge stretch because it meant risking rejection or anger. But if we're going to live in power and joy, we must paint it red. We have to bring our stuff to the light, all of it. We must be forthcoming, clear, and yes, obvious. Now, don't hear this as being brutal, abusive, or mean. It's not that, you know, especially if anybody ever comes up to you and says, I'm just telling you this for your own good, run the other way. Because that is not for your own good. That is for them to d exhibit some sort of control or, or ego experience. No, nothing is for your own good. You're the one who knows your own good. I don't. I really, really don't. And by the way, I don't want to. I just want to know that you are part of the infinite good. That's all I need to know. You know the rest. So I want each of us to walk away tonight with the knowing that we are worth telling the truth about ourselves and our lives because we have been created and coded to do just that. You know, when we tell ourselves the spiritual truth about who and what we are, and then we begin to believe it, our lives open up in these magnificent paths of possibility. You know, we have been, yes, created and coded because we are made not just in God's image or similar to God, we are emanations of the Most High emanations. We're not just, as I like to say, God adjacent. We are not just God. We are God here. We are divine beings. You know, you might even meditate on the idea that my image of me, that divine and fully sourced me, creates me. My image of me creates me. Because you know what? It really, really does. So the spiritual truth is that we are indeed emanations of the Most High. We are not mere representations of status quo, I promise you. You know, and Jesus, the teacher, said, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. He did not say, a clever ruse will set you free. He didn't say, a well-timed distraction will set you free. And he didn't say, a non-disclosure agreement with your parents and your family members will set you free. He didn't say any of that. He said the truth will set you free. We have to bring our lives and our hearts into the light. So Charles Fillmore was the co-founder of Unity with his wife, Myrtle. I love that name, Myrtle. <laughs> Not just because it rhymes with turtle. I just think it's a cool name. Anyway, and so Charles Fillmore wrote this, that light is the understanding principle in mind. It is the understanding principle. In divine order, it always comes first into our consciousness. Light is a symbol of wisdom. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, he meant that he was the expressor of truth in all its aspects. You and I have that same Christ light within us. We are the expressors of truth in all, all of its aspects, all of its aspects. When we paint something red or bring it in the light, it's, it's like we have had an exponential increase in our, our spiritual and our mental bandwidth, right? It's because we're no longer being drained by our fears and our sense of unworthiness and the, and the thoughts of separation from God. Inner light is actually another way of describing the illumination 
of spirit's presence already, already in residence at the center of our being. It's already there. You don't have to go anywhere for it. You already have it. So when we bring our attention to this inner light, we become vehicles for expansion and for greater love. Charles Fillmore also wrote that truth abides in fullness at the very core of man's being. Think about that. Truth abides in fullness at the very core. As his or her consciousness expands our awareness, we touch the everlasting truth. What seems new is but the unveiling of that which has always been. So our discovery will be for the first time over and over again, but it's always present within us. Ernest Holmes, in the textbook, I was reading through it today, and he has this phrase that he uses, emergent evolution. I thought, well, that's really cool. And it means it's the type of evolution which takes place from the necessity of the condition. So when we needed fingers, he said, we grew them. Emergent evolution. You and I are living in this manifest plane and we live in the conditioned plane of experience. And that means that our own emergent evolution is calling us to grow into greater expressions of the infinite. Of, it's calling us to turn to the light that we have within. It's calling us to look at anything that's going on, anything, and to no longer hide it, but to paint it red, to paint it bright, brilliant, crimson, whatever we have to do to bring it into our awareness, to bring it into the wisdom of God, the infinite wisdom of God. When we tell the truth and bring our stuff to the light, we become vessels for all that we need. And moreover, we get to be receptive, available, which is the big one, and willing to rise up and live from our pre-installed God protocol and paradigm. You know, light was the first great revelation of divine creative energy that called all beings, all living things into being. This phrase, let there be light. Let there be light. One of the first things you read when you read Genesis. It's one of the most powerful demandments that we can place upon our own emergent evolution. So the other day, Dr. Mark talked about mental atmosphere and the idea that anything we do carries with it the energy with which we do it. Everything has a mental atmosphere, and everything, everything, whether it's anything, person, place, whatever, there's this emanation of presence, of who and what they are. So can you imagine the shift in energy within our own beings, our own lives, if we started, you and I started this very night, this very moment to command and to demand that whenever anything positive or negative, appeared before us, we responded with the phrase, let there be light. Let there be light. And we're not even saying, light, turn on the light. We're saying, let there be light. Let there be light. And light is that wisdom. It is that knowing. It is that expansion. We are just reminding ourselves, let that be. Let there be light. And could you imagine how much the world would start to shift and change? How much it would rise up, how much everything would shift if, if everybody had this automatic response to everything, everything we hear or see about, and it's always that, let there be light. Let there be light, or let me be light. Let me be light. Will you make people uncomfortable? Eh, probably. Yep. Will they talk about you? Yeah, probably. But wouldn't you rather have them talk about you and your emergent evolution than, you know, your decrepit dissolution? Wouldn't you rather have that be the, the dinner table conversation? So let's give them something to talk about. <laughs> let's paint it red. Let's do that now, shall we? All right. So I'm going to invite us to just turn within Ah, and take all of these ideas into a place of, of consciousness. So we turn within. God has given us something to talk about. 
And now we, in our own emergent evolution, give God that power and presence within us that surrounds and fills us, defines us and divines us, something to talk about, something to shine about, something to expand and express through and as. How wonderful to know that that infinite, that infinite invisible presence, which we call God, which we call spirit, which we call life itself, which is that same, same wisdom and intelligence that has created, sustained the planets in their orbits, that keeps the tides rising and falling. How wonderful to know that that is that same intelligence that looked at everything in this universe and decided it needed you and me to complete the picture. We are here by right of consciousness. We are here as expressions of oneness, and that cannot be denied, nor can it be taken away. We are one of God, one with God, one as God. So we claim now a greater availability to understanding that, and even before that understanding begins to lift us and shift us, we allow for the possibility of change to happen, of healing to happen, for of wholeness to be revealed, of abundance to be expressed, of every area in our lives as we move into the energetic field of knowing that this too is good, this too is God. And we rest in that and we dance in it. We allow it to be that which animates us, invigorates us and truly, truly Mm, brings us into a place where it celebrates us and we celebrate it. Uh, we allow this feeling to get the healing. We release our story so that we might have room for glory and we dance in that. And where there appears to be a need for for relationship healing, we know that the love of God is that which flows through us. It flows to us and we become willing, receptive, expansive channels for the love of God, for the love of spirit, for the love of life, for it cannot be contained within us. So therefore we must express it. We must share it and we must perceive everything around us through that. As we say, let there be light. Let there be light, let me be light. Let there be love, let me be love. Let there be grace, let me be grace. Let there be wholeness, let me be wholeness. Let there be all, all of that infinite, oh, capacity for, for presence be expressed through me. I am your channel. God, I am fully open and fully receptive. And I know now for each of us that we are swimming in that ocean, that infinite ocean, saturated with that wholeness that is God and that it is now expressed in every area of life. And if there is someone who's somewhere on the corner of our minds that we have concerned about, we bring that person into this circle. We bring that pers person in now. Ah. And we say, I praise him. I raise him in the name of love. I praise her. I raise her in the name of love. And we do this for Ukraine. I praise Ukraine. I raise Ukraine in the name of love. We do it for Russia and for Putin. I praise all of them. I raise all of them in the name of love. For our true nature is love. We release any need for judging because that does not serve us anymore. We are moving into this greater knowing because we are emergent. <sighs> we are in this field of emergent evolution and we say, yes, yes, yes. Paint it red, paint it red, paint it bright, paint it white, paint it whatever it is, but let's bring it into that light that is the truth of being. So I know for ourselves, for this, for this church, for beings everywhere that we are blessed. I bless this I bless this place. I bless this church because I know it is awesome. And I bless all churches. I bless all synagogues, mosques, ashrams, temples, cathedrals, any place where people gather, knowing that God is all that's going on. So we know it is so. We know it is so. And I invite you to say with me, 
I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Let's say that again. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. I know that it is God. I am grateful. I release this word. Together we say amen. amen. And we are good to go. take your offerings and hold them in your hand hold them to your heart and say with me from the love of pure spirit within me I bless this gift I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper it is evidence of my faith and belief it does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly thank you I was just told I should introduce myself, so I'm going to do that. Hi, I'm Carrie Herrera, practitioner here at this wonderful, wonderful place. And ministerial student. And ministerial student. And also, next time I tell you to stand, unless I say Simon Says, don't do it. <laughs> or Carrie Says. Or Carrie Says. Okay, announcements. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text to give phone number is inside your program, and a QR code is on the back. Or go to NH crs.org slash give. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. Meditation 6.50 p.m. Service 7 p.m. Join Reverend Sidney next week as she shares on the topic 
Gracism, the Art of Inclusion. Yeah, so um, we are in, uh, June is a really powerful month. Um, it is not only Pride Month for our brothers and sisters who are on that gender spectrum of LGBTQ um, IA, but also we honor and, and really regard the idea of Juneteenth and what that means to our brothers and sisters in the African American and black community. So next week, this idea of gracism, I've been working a lot with groups both in CSL and with Unity uh, for the last several years in the areas of social justice, of equity training, of um, looking at the areas where system, systemic and systematic racism is, and, and prejudice is affecting beings in this world. And the idea is that just because it hasn't happened to you doesn't mean that it doesn't exist and it doesn't happen to other people. So next week, one of our beautiful and amazing practitioners, Tony Counts Rose, who is black, will be here with me and we will be talking about that and how science of mind and these principles of new thought apply and how can we use them to rise up and to be a space for greater understanding and healing and light in this world, which clearly needs greater understanding and healing and light. So thank you for asking me to talk about that, Blair. What's the Facebook bonus? I'm sorry, what? What's the Facebook bonus? The Facebook bonus? Yes, that we'll be taking questions. Oh, that's right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink, okay. Um, Yes, so yes, we will be taking questions, and we'll set up a mic here too, because it'll be the, our talk show format. So we're, we're moving into the occasional thing of what I like to call conscious conversations. And so that's where we interview each other, and it's not just me asking Tony questions, she'll ask me questions, and we're hoping to get into some, some deep truths, and they might be uncomfortable, but as you heard earlier, that's kind of what we're here to do, comfort the afflicted, afflict the comfortable, and, and you know, I take that assignment very seriously, clearly. Um, so yes, we will be, if you're on Facebook, um, we will be taking your comments and questions. So, you know, be articulate, be nice, be sweet, be polite, don't be rude. <laughs> all of that good, just, be, just be, be an adult, you know, be an accountable adult, that's all. <laughs> So don't be rude, but all week, just go walking around afflicting the comfortable. <laughs> Let there be light. Yay. Yeah. So, gracism, the art of inclusion. Japan trip with Dr. Mark, October 2022. Join Dr. Mark for the spiritual adventure of a lifetime. For details and sign up, visit our website today. Scientific Christian Mental Practice, part one with Dr. Mark. There is still time to sign up for this remarkable class based on the teachings of Emma Curtis Hopkins. Classes meet Mondays through July 18th, no class on July 4th, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. on Zoom only. Cost is $150, sign up online today. Grief support, this group facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets this Sunday at 1 p.m. on Zoom. All are welcome. Pray like you've never prayed before. Rock Your Word is Reverend Sydney's brand new, I felt like I should say Rev Sydney's brand new six week how to pray class. Join Rev Sydney starting June 28th for this transformational class where you'll learn affirmative, powerful, and effective prayer. Sign up on our website today. Cost is $175. Required text will be available in the bookstore next week. If you or a loved one could use some enhanced spiritual support, we have a pastoral care team ready to help. Please reach out to our team through our website. Our NHCRS band is back this Sunday. Be sure to join us. All right. Love that band. Uh, Zoom virtual patio, before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation, every morning Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all of our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Right. Okay. Um, okay, I just want to thank some people. Um, first of all, the amazing Margaret Owens, and you can get her music on margaretowens.com. And wow, 
you're just, you're, you're fierce. You really are. Thank you for being here. Um, our practitioner tonight holding vigil was Mary Catherine O'Hart over here. She's not been napping. She's been keeping the consciousness for us. Um, and our Facebook Live support was Dean Regan and, oh, I want to say this right, Yesenia Ochoa. I'm hoping I said it right. Please, somebody correct me if I, if I got it wrong. Um, Zoom support tonight was Brenda Jordan, our Zoom host, and Lynn Romanowski, our NHCRS host. And here in the sanctuary, lights and sound and pictures of the red door, because when we paint it red, then we get to walk through into a greater life. Adam, thank you so much for doing all of that. The person who greeted you and ushed you in was greeter and usher Colleen Butler. Our sanctuary, yeah, yeah, right? Our sanctuary media team, Doreen Remo, Nikki Savara, and Blair Thompson. Um, Sam Krieger, monster. Pulpit support, the soon-to-be incipient Reverend Carrie Herrera. I am Rev. Sydney. I'm glad that you all joined us in person or virtually. Let's pray and go have some coffee, shall we? Okay, so how wonderful to know that we are alive in the heart of God, that we are one in that, and that we get to move out into the world with our new mantra, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light. My image of God creates me, let there be light. So we do so, we are that light, we live in that light, we look for that light, Ah, we bring that light. We bring the God because that's what we do. We just bring the God. So I am grateful for our time together and I know that it will continue to resonate and circulate and bless us for the next week until we meet again. So I know that we are, you're welcome. We are guided and guarded and open-hearted and all is well and so it is. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing Blessed Always one more time with yeah. Margaret Owen.